The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sounds of suspense. To the fear you can hear. I have a story for you about a writer. A writer of books. We all know what it is to read a book. We all read. Sometimes to learn. Sometimes to pass the time. Sometimes to experience a life unrelated to our own. And sometimes to surrender ourselves to the fantasies of a person we have never met and will never meet. But what is it to write a book? Ah, that's another thing altogether. But what difference does it make? All the difference in the world. Well, it's not as if it were real. It is real. Don't you see that? Well, uh, I mean, it's not real life. It is real life. It's a life more real than yours or mine or any life that anyone will ever live. But how can you say that? It's just a book. <laughs> mystery drama, Three Women, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Ruth Ford. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll return shortly with Act One. It's no longer a mystery that people love Radio Mystery Theater. What a response to our invitation to write. I'm High Brown, producer of Mystery Theater, and I'm overwhelmed by your many thousands of letters and the nice things you have to say. Just one problem. So many of you asked questions as well as made comments that we simply cannot send everyone a personal thank you note, regretfully. But our prize drawing is now over, so if you want an answer to a specific question, please ask it again, and we'll try to send you a quick reply. Write Mystery Theater, Box 5152, Radio City Station, New York, 10019. That's Mystery Theater, Box 5152, Radio City Station, New York, 10019. And in response to your good wishes, we'll do our very best to live up to them. What is a book? Two, three, four hundred pages of words lying side by side in rows. That's all. Words we all know. Many of them we use. Nothing mysterious about the words themselves. But they are not thrown helter-skelter on the pages, are they? No. They lie there in a certain order. Each one following on the one before. And who prescribed that order? Who put this word here and that word there? A writer. And this is the story of a writer named Stephen Lake and the book he wrote. Yes? Uh, does Mr. Lake live here? Yes. Is he home? Yeah, he's home. Um, could I see him? Well, he's working. Well, could you tell him, please, it's Mr. Higgins to see him? Higgins? I'm a publisher. Look, could I step inside? It's terribly cold out here. Yeah, I guess so. He really is working, isn't he? I mean, I hear him. His typewriter. You're a publisher, you say? Yes, that's right. If you just tell him... You can go on up. Up? Yeah, up that ladder. That's where he works up there. Oh, thank you. You get to the top, just bang on the trap door. Well, uh, yes, thank you. Bang hard so he'll hear you. Yes. All right. He heard you. Mr. Lake, I'm Albert Higgins. Albert Higgins. Not from... <laughs> yes, from Higgins and Hart. All right to come up the rest of the way? All right. Well, I should say... Uh, can you make it? Can I help you? I think I can. Yes. Here we are. <laughs> I can't believe it. Mr. Albert Higgins. Very same. This where you work? Uh, yes, it's the only place I can get away. 
I live with my wife and my mother-in-law. That was my mother-in-law who let you in. Well, it's nice and secluded up here, anyway. Uh, may I take your coat, Mr. Higgins? Oh, thank you. No, uh, actually, I, I think I'll keep it on. You're cold. Well, it's awfully cold outside. Well, I think it's even colder in here. <laughs> <laughs> I get where I don't notice it. You have a stove, I see. Yes, but sometimes I forget to put wood in. Uh, just a second, I'll get it going again. That's a real old Franklin stove, isn't it? Genuine article. I haven't seen a Franklin stove in years. Well, they're great, if you remember to keep them lighted. Uh, please sit down, Mr. Higgins. All right. Well, now, I'd better explain what I'm doing here. I'd sure like to know. My secretary handed me your manuscript just as I was leaving the office for the weekend. We have a little ski lodge up here, my wife and I, right up the road from you, as a matter of fact. Yes, I think maybe I've seen it. Right off Route 7, about a mile north. Yes, that's it. Well, I was coming up by myself, and on the train, I read your book. When I got to the lodge, I read it again. I like it a lot. Except for one thing. What's that? You've made one grievous error, Mr. Lake. Or, or may I call you Stephen? Call me anything. What's the mistake? You've killed off the most attractive character in the book. You mean Clarissa? <sighs> you can't do that, my boy. Why, nine-tenths of the book's appeal is the charm of that girl. She, she's another Scarlet O'Hara. You can't spend 200 pages making us fall in love with this marvelous creature and then, poof, just like that, have her die on us, go out of our lives. <sighs> you, can, you just can't do that. But I have to. Well, you don't have to at all, Stephen. You've written a marvelous book. I want to publish it. All I want from you is ten new pages. The last ten. Write me ten new pages at the end and let Clarissa live. I can't. I can't. Now, Stephen, that isn't asking much. It's everything. I can't do it. She has to die. She has to. Why does she have to die? Because... Because if she doesn't die, I don't know what'll happen to me. Mama? That you, Corella? Mm, it's me. Well, get your boots off. <laughs> Dinner ready? Just about. Mm, have you called Stephen? He gets so wrapped up in his writing. Well, he's not wrapped up now. Listen to him. He's thinking, Mama. He's walking up and down to help him think. Well, he can't be putting words down every single minute. He's been walking up and down like that ever since that man left. What man? What, was somebody here? A Mr. Higgins. Higgins? Albert Higgins? From Higgins and Hart? I believe he did say he was a publisher. Oh, Mama. It was our last hope. You know, every other publisher turned down Steve's novel, and he sent it to Higgins and Hart. But, but Mr. Higgins was here? They were up there together for about 15 minutes, and then the great Mr. Higgins came tumbling down the ladder like the devil himself was after him. Very red in the face. Looked at me like everything was my fault, and catapulted out of here. But you didn't ask Steve what happened? Loretta, when have I ever asked Mr. Genius-type novel writer Stephen Lake anything? If he feels like telling me, he'll tell me, which he never does. I'm going to find out. Uh, good luck is all I can say. Stephen! It's impossible. Absolutely impossible. Stephen! Impossible, Clarissa, I can't... D darling, are, are you all right? Loretta. You just get home? Mm, Mrs. McGinnis wanted her windows washed. Uh, darling, Mama said... I don't want you washing windows. S Stephen, Mama said there was a man here today. A Mr. Higgins? Albert Higgins. He really was here? He has a ski lodge up the road. Well, he didn't just um, drop in, did he? What did he want? He read my book. He wants to publish it. <gasps> oh, Stephen, well... Oh, why didn't you say so? He wants me to change it. Well, uh, does he want you to, to change it a lot? Completely. Oh. Well, would that be a lot of work? The last ten pages. He wants me... He wants me to let Clarissa live. <laughs> is that all? Oh, Stephen. What do you mean, is that all? Clarissa is supposed to die. It's all been decided. She has to die. I can't let her go on living just to please Mr. Higgins. But it's not just Mr. Higgins. 
Oh, Stephen, I, I, I wasn't going to tell you yet, not for a while. But I can't go on doing housework for other people much longer. I never wanted you to do housework for other people. But pretty soon, I won't be able to. I'm... I'm going to have a baby, Stephen. You're not. You... You, you must be wrong. Oh, no, I'm not wrong. Not about this. You must be. Well, Stephen, aren't you glad? J- just a little bit and... Coming right now, what with Mr. Higgins wanting to publish your book, why in the spring we'll both be having babies. You'd be having your book, and I'd be having... I can't let Clarissa live. I can't do it. She has to die. Just the way I wrote it, she has got to die. Stephen, you're frightening me. I'm sorry. What difference would it make if you let Clarissa live? All the difference in the world. It's not as if it were real. It's just a book. It's not just a book. Loretta, I, I, I can't talk about it anymore right now. Well, you think about it, won't you? About rewriting it? I'll think about it. <laughs> well, Mama says dinner's almost ready. I'll be right down. Well, don't be long. I won't. Clarissa. Clarissa, I can't let you live. Oh, yes, you can, darling. I can't. You can do anything you put your mind to, Stephen. Anything at all. You're such a great man, darling. You can do anything. Absolutely anything at all. You know you can. Mr. Higgins, this is Stephen Lake. I have to see you, sir. No, right away, if that's possible. I'll come to your place. Yes, it's better that way. In an hour. All right, sir. I'll be there. Oh, that's my sweet Stephen. My dear love. My own brilliant boy. My Stephen. I'm glad you called me, Stephen. I must say I was a trifle perturbed at your outburst this afternoon. It seemed such a little thing I was asking to kill off a character like Clarissa in the last ten pages when you've spent the entire book constructing her, her, her magnetic personality. It's not right. I have to do it, sir. But it's cheating, leading your readers up the garden path. I'll tell you something, which perhaps I shouldn't, but anyway, I discussed with my wife the possibility of a sequel to this book, using the same central character. Clarissa? It's a shame to waste a character like that on one book. There should be another, and perhaps another. How can we do that if you kill her off at the end of your first book? Mr. Higgins... I've been writing for seven years steadily. I've never sold anything. Six years ago, I got married. My wife, Loretta, has been working as a domestic all these years. And her mother goes out every day to do other people's laundry. I haven't brought in one red cent in all that time. But now you will. Lots of red cent. The house we're living in, that's an abandoned one-room schoolhouse. We bought it a year ago with every cent we had in the savings bank. Four hundred dollars. At a county auction. The room where I work used to be the place where they stored supplies. We got the Franklin stove from a junkyard. If you want the truth, we stole it. Young writers never have it easy, Stephen. My wife has never complained, never once. She's scrubbed other women's floors. She's washed their dishes and dusted their furniture and scarred their bathtubs and polished their silver. Well, in view of all this, I should think you'd jump at the chance to have your novel published. I do jump at it. I am jumping at it. Only... I can't let Clarissa live. She's got to die ten pages from the end of the book. But that's unreasonable. Don't you think I wanted her to live? Don't you think I kept her alive as long as I could? You think I wanted to kill her? I had to. I can't for the life of me see why. Because... Because... I'd fallen in love with her. (laughs) Oh, come now, Stephen. Deeply, hopelessly, irrevocably in love. Now, now, my boy, I've been a publisher a long time. I've talked to dozens of authors. They all fall in love with characters they've created. It happens all the time. Clarissa isn't just a character. Well, of course she is. She didn't exist before you created her, did she? She exists now. 
Good heavens, man, she came out of your mind. She has no life except the one you gave her. Maybe she did come out of my mind, but now she's got a life of her own. Well, in a manner of speaking, of course she has. And I want to prolong that life, Stephen. I predict great success for Clarissa. And for you, you and Clarissa are one, you might say. No. No, we are not one. We must never be one. I want her dead. And out of my life. <sighs> On my word, I can't follow you. Mr. Higgins, if Clarissa is allowed to live... I shall desert my wife. Desert your wife? My wife is going to have a baby. Well, then, why on earth would you desert her? Because I love Clarissa. I love her with the kind of love I never knew existed. A love that has more power over me than I have over myself. I can't fight it. I can't escape it. It haunts my waking hours and my dreams as well. Those last ten pages of the book weren't easy to write, Mr. Higgins. But I had to write them. I had to free myself somehow from a love that was destroying my soul, my life. I don't think you're quite sane, Stephen. Neither do I. Suppose... Suppose we were to publish the book as it is. Oh, if only you would. And Clarissa dies. What then? Why then... She'd go back to being a character in a book. And if you let her live? Then... Then I would follow her. My life. My body. Even my talent would belong to her. I myself would belong to Clarissa and to her alone. Everybody talks about love, but nobody does anything about it. Now, here for the first time, we have a man who wants to do something. He wants to kill the lady. It may not be the perfect solution, not one to be universally recommended. Still, it's something. We'll be back shortly with Act Two. It was an American writer who said it. And not so long ago. Novelists, whatever else they may be, are also children talking to children in the dark. Listen with me now to the second act of Three Women. Stephen is talking to Clarissa, a character he created in one of his books, In the Dark. Clarissa, I can't let you go on living. But I want to, Stephen. Of course you want to. We all want to. But I want to so badly, and it's your fault, Stephen. <laughs> Why is it my fault? Because you gave me such a wonderful life in your book. I enjoy it so much. I can't bear the thought of giving it up. Neither can I. Neither can I. To have had a life like that and then to die ten pages from the end of the book. I know, I know. When the book is published... You'll be dead. I don't see why, Stephen. I really don't. Because till now it's just been you and me and this room and words on paper. But after the book is published... What will it be then? It'll be something that sells for seven ninety-five, dollar fifty in the paperback edition. My goodness, you're counting on a big sale, aren't you? Just hoping. But it won't have a big sale if you kill me off, sweetheart. It might. What was that? Who came in? Probably my mother-in-law. She gets home early to get dinner ready. Will she come up here? I don't think so. She hardly ever does. Oh, but let's talk some more about how much you love me. She, she is coming up here. Oh, bother. Well, we'll talk some more later. I am not going to let you kill me off, Stephen. It's too cruel. Uh, just a minute. All right, to come up. Of course, Mother, give me your hand. What a place... How do you stand it? I like it. It's cold, too. Your fire's gone out. You been working? Oh, uh, no, not much. Well, what have you been doing? Figuring something out? Well, uh, trying to. Figuring out what to do with the last ten pages of your novel? More or less. Stephen, it's not up to me to tell you what to do. Then don't. I don't know one book from another, but... This book of yours, 
It's a novel, isn't it? It's a novel. About made-up people, right? Yes. So what's the difference? You can do what you want with made-up people. They can live as long as... <laughs> as long as you're alive to write about them. True? Is that true? <sighs> yes, yes, that's true. So, if Mr. Higgins says you should let this character, this uh, Clarissa, go on living... What's the difference? Let the lady live. Who cares? Also, and I don't mean this as a reproach, we can use the money. Believe me, I know that. So, if a little lady is worth more alive than dead, I say let her live. Yeah. Not a lot of work. The way I understand it from Loretta, I mean, you don't have to write the whole book over. Just the last ten pages. Well, what's that? You can knock that off in no time. Well... I better be getting on down and get dinner started. It'll be ready in about half an hour. I'll be down. Oh, darling. Darling, yes. Yes, sweetheart. The cold hand I held, wet with my tears. Oh, Stephen, that's beautiful. Stirred ever so little. The fingers moved faintly in mine. Oh, Stephen, yes. That was a very good dinner, Mother. How would you know? You hardly tasted it. Well, what I did taste was awfully good. Mm, nobody's going to eat anymore, I'll clear. Well, let me help you. Oh, don't be silly, Mom, and I'll finish up. You go back to work if you want to. Well, all right, I... I guess I will. Poor Stephen. He looks awful. He hardly eats anything anymore. I had a talk with him today about changing a book. What did you say? I said, what's the difference? A character in a book can be alive or dead. Who cares? Stephen cares. Well, why should he? Oh, Mama, he's a writer. Writers care about these things. It has something to do with, um, artistic integrity. You think maybe somebody's putting things into Stephen's head, artistic notions, things like that? Who would do that? Mr. Higgins wants him to change the book. I wasn't thinking of Mr. Higgins. I was thinking of some woman... What woman? I don't know what woman. I don't suppose I should say this, but lots of times I hear him talking up there. Uh, oh, Mama. Steve talks to himself all the time when he's trying to work things out. This isn't talking to himself. This is talking to somebody. <gasps> there's a big difference. And another thing, that that mattress he has up there, it looks to me like there's two people been lying on it. Mama! All right, all right, all right, all right. I told you I shouldn't say it. Now I'm sorry I did. He didn't seem very happy about the baby. I should have kept my mouth shut. Oh, that's all right. You finish up the dishes. I'm going up to talk to him. Don't say I said anything. Don't tell him we've been talking. I won't. Yeah, just a second. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Of course not. Well, I didn't hear the typewriters, so, uh... Stephen, do you love me? What kind of a question is that? <laughs> it's the kind of question wives are always asking, even if they never say the words. Yes. I love you. Are you glad we're going to have a child? Yes. Yes, I'm... I'm glad we're going to have a child. <laughs> well, ask a straight question and you get a straight answer. That's the way it should be. So, I'll ask you another one. Why don't you want to change the book? Uh, Loretta, I... I just don't. Well, it's not a straight answer. I know it isn't. I, I, I just can't. Stephen, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you another straight question. Are you interested in some other woman... Interested? Mm. No. Because if you are, I'll go away. Oh, I don't want you to go away. I'll go away and have the baby someplace else. Oh. Till you get over this other woman, then I'll come back. 
Or if you don't get over her, I'll stay away. Oh, Loretta. Stephen, can you swear to me that there's no other woman in your life except me? Can you promise me that? Loretta, I swear to you, I promise you that I love you. (sighs) That I love you, that I want you for my wife for always, for as long as we live. I guess I'll have to be satisfied with that. It's the truth. (laughs) All right. I'll let you work now. Oh, I thought she'd never leave. Please, Clarissa, I don't feel like talking to you right now. Why didn't you tell her about me? How could I tell her about you? She wouldn't believe me. Nobody would. Darling, you know what I was thinking while Loretta was going on and on about herself and you and the baby she's going to have? I was thinking, why don't I have a baby? Oh, not in this book, of course, but later on in some other book. I'll have this perfectly gorgeous child who'll have my sweet disposition and your marvelous brains. How about that? Mama, I asked him if there was somebody else, another woman. Oh, well. He said he loved me and wanted me for his wife for as long as we live. I still hear him talking up there, and it certainly sounds to me like he's talking to somebody. Who do you suppose that is? Only one way to find out. Oh, Mr. Higgins, come in before you freeze to death. Winter's closing in on us. It sure is. How are you, Mr. Higgins? Fine. Fine. I thrive on the cold. Uh, Mrs. Lake, Mm -hmm. your husband's in, I hope. Mm -hmm. He's up there, working, I guess. Has he talked to you about, uh, you know, about Clarissa keeping her alive? He just says he doesn't want to. All right to go up and see him? Oh, I'm sure it is. Good luck, Mr. Higgins. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Higgins. Okay to talk to you for a few minutes, Stephen? Uh, I, I guess so, sure. I, uh, I thought I'd like to see how you're getting along. I'm not. You haven't done any work? None at all? Oh, a few pages. They're over there next to the typewriter. Okay to have a look? If you want to. Mr. Higgins, if you're here, talk to me about letting Clarissa live. I most certainly am. But I'm not sure I can take it anymore. My mother-in-law is talking to me about it. My wife talks to me about it. Stephen, this is very good so far. And the hardest thing of all is Clarissa talks to me about it. Do you know what she wants now? She wants a baby. My baby. Well, you could probably work in a baby later on. Mr. Higgins, if Clarissa has a baby... Am I going to love it more than Loretta's baby? Stephen, these pages are very good. Now write the last couple of pages. I've got to kill her off, Mr. Higgins, and never write about her anymore. Never. Now, Stephen, stop it. Calm down and try to be reasonable. I can't be reasonable. I love my wife, Mr. Higgins. I want to live with my wife and our child. I can't live with her and Clarissa, too. No, Mr. Higgins. Clarissa has to die just the way I wrote it in the first place. If she dies in this book, then I can't write about her anymore. And if I don't write about her anymore, she won't exist. Stephen, I won't publish the book if Clarissa dies. I put it to you straight. Don't you think you owe it to your wife, to your mother-in-law, to yourself, to make this little concession? Concession? What will happen to them if you don't? What will happen to them? If I do... Money is the root of all evil. And killing is certainly evil. Yet, here we have a man who wants to kill... and is letting himself be talked out of killing for money. It leaves us with the perplexing question... What is evil? Maybe we'll find out when we return shortly for Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. Pity the poor novelist, alone with his thoughts, his visions, 
his conceits, his fancies, his only solid, substantial companion, his typewriter. Stephen? What is it, Clarissa? Everybody wants me to live except you. I know, I know. And you're the one who loves me. I know. Nobody else even knows me. Except from reading the book, and that's not really knowing. Clarissa, I wish you'd let me work. How am I doing? You're living. Oh. Just barely, but you're living. I thought I was. Because I was feeling so warm and loving about you. I know the only reason you're keeping me alive is for the money. You can't fool me, Stephen. If there was a way to kill me and still make the money, I bet you'd take it. There ought to be a way. Clarissa, you've given me an idea. Oh, it makes me very happy if I've given you something. You've given me everything. It's about time I gave something back to you. Uh, Mr. Higgins, Stephen Lake. Yes, uh, I have an idea. Uh, I have to talk to you about it right away. Can I come to your house? Well, that's all right. I have snowshoes. I'll be there in, uh, say, uh, half an hour. Thanks, Mr. Higgins. What kind of an idea have you got? Never you mind. I'm coming with you. No, I don't want you tagging along. I want to tag along. Where are my snowshoes? Right there. Now, what's this big idea you have to tell Mr. Higgins? None of your business. Is it about me? As a matter of fact, it is. So then it is my business. Stephen, you're not going to kill me off, are you? I thought that was all decided. Are you? idea is this, Mr. Higgins. I'll finish up the book just the way you want it. Good, good. Clarissa stirs and comes to life. Whatever it was she was dying of, she only went into coma, etc., etc. I'll work it out. I'll give you the book in a couple of days, maybe by tomorrow. Good. Then, if you still like it... Oh, I like it. It's yours. Only, I want it in my contract that whatever money the book makes goes to my wife. I want her to get all the proceeds. But... It's your book? Why, well, I, I just happened to write it, that's all. And writing it, I nearly ruined my wife's happiness and my own. I don't want any money for that. Stephen, it seems to me that you're simply feeling guilty about your feelings for Clarissa. I am. Guilty as hell. And about the other books, the ones after this one. You're not going to tell me you don't want any of that money either. I want somebody else to write those things, not me. You're joking. Mr. Higgins, I've got to get Clarissa out of my head. And the only way to do that is to put her into somebody else's head. Let somebody else keep her alive, not me. Well, uh, I suppose we could find a ghostwriter, but... At least let me have those last ten pages with Clarissa alive. Mr. Higgins, you'll have them. Tonight. <laughs> You are busy, aren't you? Very. You're working on the new ending to the novel, aren't you? That's right. And I get to live and live and live and live. Clarissa, it's and... cold in here. Why don't you do something useful, like putting some wood in the stove? I don't know how. Uh, you don't know much, do you? Uh, enough. Okay, I'll do it. Make a nice big fire, and then we can sit and talk about what's going to happen next. What do you mean by next? In all the other books, the ones you're going to write after this one. Now, blow on this fire, will you? Oh. At least you can do that. Okay. Go on, tell me about the other books. I don't know anything about the other books. Would you like to hear some of my ideas? Not really. Well, that's enough. You can stop blowing. It's caught fire. Ah. I feel good. I think the next novel ought to be in Venice. Clarissa, I have made a deal with Mr. Higgins... When I finish these ten pages, thereby keeping you alive, mm -hmm. I shall turn them over to him to replace the original ten. And then I shall write no more books. Well, no more books about you, anyway. But Mr. Higgins thinks I'm wonderful. He wants lots of books about me. He's going to get lots of books about you, but they won't be written by me. But who'll write them? A ghost. A ghost? I don't want to be written by a ghost. 
I'm part ghost myself. Oh, he'll be a real live man. A ghost writer. That's what they are called in the publishing business. But it won't be you? Definitely not me. But it will be a real live man. Yes. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to get back to work. I wonder, will he be as handsome as you? Handsomer, probably. I wonder, will he love me the way you do? For his sake, I hope not. I wonder, will I love him? Why should you love him? Why not? You never loved me. Oh, that's the way you wrote it. I couldn't love anyone. Except yourself. But he might write me differently, mightn't he? He shouldn't. He should follow the character exactly as I've set it down in the first book. But if he falls in love with me, he might want it changed so I could fall in love with him. It would be so much more convenient for everybody. Clarissa, you wouldn't. Wouldn't what? Fall in love. Fall in love with the ghostwriter. Would you? How should I know? Well, you... You wouldn't have his child. You wouldn't do that. I think I'll put another piece of wood on the fire. Or would you rather do it? Clarissa, would you have his child? There. Oh, look. That's a nice fire. Lovely. Answer me. Would you have his child? Well, Stephen, if that's the way he writes it, I guess I'll have to. Stephen, what are you doing? Oh, no, no. You're not going to have his child. No. Stephen. You're going back to where you were in the original. You're going to die ten pages from the end of the book. You're not going to burn the new pages, Stephen. You're not. Dora! Help! Help! Someone help me! I'm on fire! Help me! The quilt! Get me the quilt, please! Help me! Ah! get it, Mama. Mrs. Lee. Mr. Higgins. It's Mr. Higgins, Mama. Oh. I haven't seen you since the funeral, Mr. Higgins. Thank you for the beautiful flowers. May I come in for a minute? Why, of course. Come in. Would you, uh, like a cup of tea, Mr. Higgins? I was just about to put the kettle on. Uh, thank you, no, Mrs. Lake. I, uh, I haven't wanted to intrude before this on your grief. Such such a terrible accident. Mama and I can't figure out how it happened. You know, Stephen knew that Franklin stove so well. He, he'd used it for years. And then... It was like it sort of blew up in his face. Mrs. Lake, he was working on the new ending for the novel when he... when it happened. At least I think he was. Well, I don't know for sure, Mr. Higgins. He promised me I'd have the new pages that same night. He he acted as though he couldn't wait to get started. Well, then I imagine that's what he was doing. Mrs. Lake, would you mind if I'm not intruding? Could I go up and take a look? You see, if I can find them, I can just substitute them for the original last ten pages, and we can go right to work. I think we might be able to publish the book this spring. Why, that would be wonderful. At least you'd have a little money coming in. Mm, Stephen would have liked that. So, is it all right if I take a look? Why, surely. You don't mind if I don't go up there with you? I haven't wanted to somehow since the fire. No, 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 that's quite all right. I'll go up by myself. Trap door's not locked, Mr. Higgins. Make it all right? Yes, thank you. Fine. Oh, I suppose I should have cleaned up that place, but... I just couldn't. No hurry. When the time comes, I'll do it. Never entered my head to look for those ten pages. No, never mind. Mama, if he... If he finds the pages and publishes the book, and if it's a success, that'll be nice, won't it? Mrs. Lake. What is it, Mr. Higgins? You found them? I found something. I found these... These ten pages. Oh, thank the good Lord. All neatly stacked beside his typewriter. Oh, I'm so glad, Mr. Higgins. Glad? Have you read them? When well, no. Well, listen. Lovely, gorgeous Clarissa lifted her beautiful head 
She wasn't dead after all. Well? But, but that that's not the way Stephen writes. I could hardly believe my eyes. That creamy complexion was beginning to pinken. Pinken? There's no such word as pinken. My adorable sweetheart had only fainted and wasn't dead at all. My goodness, but I was happy. Now, I ask you... Stephen didn't write that way at all. Nothing like that. And who did? Who did write this awful trash? Mr. Higgins, you don't think that... Well, somebody wrote it. It's typed on his typewriter. You... You don't suppose it is possible that Stephen went mad and wrote this awful stuff while he was unbalanced? Mr. Higgins, if Stephen was a certified lunatic, he couldn't write ten pages like those there. Do you want them to keep for any reason? Oh, I don't think so. Well, I'll take them home with me and burn them. Mr. Higgins, does this mean that uh, that there won't be any book at all? Why, uh, I hadn't thought... I would so like to have a book of Stevens published. Tell you what we'll do, Mrs. Lake. We'll go ahead and publish the original version, the one where Clarissa dies. Oh! You say something? No. Sounded like a ghost, kind of. No. <laughs> it really does sound like a ghost. Must be the wind. Huh. Well, I'll be getting along. And don't you worry, you two. There'll be a little money coming in. It's still a good novel, even with Clarissa dying. Too bad, though. I'd hoped Clarissa would have a long and happy life, but such is fate. And the moral of the story is... What is the moral of the story? How's this? Lie if you like, but never believe your own lies. Or, the man who fools himself is a fool indeed. Well, something like that. You figure it out. I'll be back shortly. gift of youth is ours for just a little while. Fame is capricious, and money slips through our fingers. Health is a godsend subject to recall. Even the benison of love can elude us, or it can wither in our hearts. But the blessings of imagination, ah, they belong to us forever and ever. Our cast included Ruth Ford, George Petrie, Elspeth Eric, Joan Loring, and Roger DeCoven. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Here, darling, take your pill. Oh, thank you, darling. And now go, go back to sleep. Well, I had uh, to reset the alarm. Good night, darling. Good night. Her eyes were closed. She was only 28. She looked old. Where was the pert, vivacious Margaret who only a few months before had been bursting with life? Wasn't she as good or as bad as dead already? Wasn't it a mercy to end her suffering? Suppose I, I would somehow forget to give her the next pill. What would I be ending? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company. Makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.